Today we're mixing together NBA and College Hoops history to turn the league into the ultimate March Madness. I've got 36 different college programs. They'll be competing in an 82 game regular season, four rounds of single elimination playoffs, and the rosters we're using, ooh my god. Michael Jordan and Vince Carter flying together for UNC. Wilt Chamberlain and Joel Embiid patrolling the paint for Kansas. This all-time college roster is sick. I'll, although, full disclosure, I did not create it and I'm not 100% sure about the method the creator used. Best I can tell, he took the players that ended up having the best NBA careers from each college program, then used the prime version of those players in their professional career. There do seem to be like a, a couple exceptions, however. Michigan is the perfect example. Example. Chris Webber and Jalen Rose are rated 95 and 91 respectively, neither of whom has that higher rating on any historic or all-time team on NBA 2K24. Meanwhile, their teammate Franz Wagner has an 84 overall rating with eight badges, just like the current version of his player on the base roster. End of the day, some collegiate legends are juiced here on this roster, and honestly, I'm okay with it. This roster, regardless, is super sick. I'm very excited. So let's get into it. First group of teams I'll point out to you, there's four just complete heads. Heavyweights. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are final four. UNC, Michael Jordan, Vince Carter mentioned them earlier. The only potential hiccup for UNC might be they don't have any dominant big. I mean, Bob McAdoo's very good, but he's only 6'9. Brad Doherty is, well, he's seven feet. Um, yeah, never mind. This team might be perfect. Actually, a potential similar issue for our next heavyweight, the Duke Blue Devils. We know about Duke, brother. Jason Tatum, Kyrie Irving, Grant Hill. Uh, Elton Brand is a center. They've got a bunch of power forwards, but again, they don't have that one presence inside. And one of our Four heavyweights, the team that well, well they do, they they do have that presence inside. UCLA, led by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, they got Russell Westbrook, not bad. Bill Walton, another pretty good big. Reggie Miller, Kevin. This might be the most balanced, dominant roster. UCLA, and rounding out the heavyweights, the favorites, uh, Kentucky. Obviously, Shea, AD, D. Book, so much NBA talent. Cliff Hagen, going way back in the day. Dan Issel. They do have a lot of centers and a whole lot of point guards. Um, really interesting roster makeup here for Kentucky. We've got a handful of teams, uh, three specifically, that I think could be sneaky heavyweights, as in I didn't see them coming. Arizona, Gilbert's got a nice bump up to 96 overall. This is a deep, balanced roster. I uh, didn't expect that. Ohio State is a, a trio, a nice trio of OGs. John Havlicek, Jerry Lucas, Neil Johnston, Mike Conley, Michael Red. They, they seem like they're going to play good fundamental hoops. And from, uh, don't they call Indiana, do they call Indiana the state of basketball, or am I just making that up? Anyways, Isaiah Thomas, Walt Bell, me a bunch more OGs. Uh, the Van Arsdale, bro, I'm not going to say his first name. We don't need to get demonetized here, people. Uh, yeah, you know the vibes. In addition to those heavyweights and sneaky heavyweights, there's a few teams that have like really awesome big threes. Look at the University of Houston, man. They are not deep. They don't have much of a bench, but they've got Hakeem, Clyde Drexler, and Elvin Hayes. Like they should compete just off that. Same goes for LSU. The reason I'm pointing out some better teams lack of bigs. Uh, can they compete UNC and others? with Shaq, Bob Pettit, and Pete Maravich on the outside. Look at that trio. We got another nice big three. Well, it's like a dynamic duo for Marquette, uh, D. Wade and Jimmy Butler, but we'll toss the OG Mo Lucas in there looking pretty good. And then we get to Georgetown, who's actually more of a big four. AI, Ewing, Morning, Matumbo. Can they figure out a rotation for all these centers with Roy Hibbert too? I'm not sure. Every NCAA tourney, March Madness season, you gotta have a couple Cinderella run teams. Look at DePaul. George Mike and Mark Aguirre, Terry Cummings. I, I had no expectations for this roster, but when it started to come together, like I see the vision. Same goes for Minnesota. Who would have thought Minnesota would have a good team? Kevin McHale, Lou Hudson, uh, Archie Clark, Michael Thompson. Oh, that's Clay Thompson's dad. They, they could be all right. And the final trio of teams I want to show, uh, these would be like crazy carry jobs by one superstar. The Arizona State Sun Devils, James Harden. You know what? To be fair, Fat Lever and Freddie Lewis are 90 plus overalls. This team is not deep, but uh, James is a stud. And similarly, Cincinnati, they've got big O Oscar Robertson joined by Hall of Famer Jack Twyman. After that, it gets real thin, but Oscar always simulates so well in these videos. Drop a comment down below, which all-time college team do you think will be the ultimate winner in this video? Let me know right now. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor, Under.
underdog fantasy right now. New customers get a Nikola Jokic special when they sign up. That's great. That's awesome. If you use my code JCAN right now when you sign up, you'll get an additional Kevin Durant special too. These two specials though go active Saturday, March 23rd. So you only got a couple days from when I post this. Um, you want to act now. As always, they'll match your first deposit up to $100, but getting two specials at sign up, I mean, I mean, now is the time. If you've been thinking about it at all, go do it. I just woke my dog Winnie up saying this. Um, she's probably mad at me, but just know she approves of this message as well. Do not put words in my mouth. And here we go. Russell Westbrook, MVP. All right, so UCLA having a player win MVP. Not surprising. I probably would have guessed it'd be Kareem, but Russ, pretty solid numbers. Oh, there you go. Uh, they also won six man of the year. Bill Walton, Um, he could have won MVP. Will Chamberlain takes home DPOI. I was going to say, if UCLA swept the awards, that would be something. A uh, really good season from Will. Not sure how this is calculated, but uh, don't care. Shout out Andre Drummond winning most improved for UConn. And would you, oh my, would you look at Chris Bosch, clutch player of the year, 22 and 11 averages. Yo, he washed Russell Westbrook and Will, all them do. All NBA first team, we've got Russ leading UCLA, Tim Duncan from Wake Forest, Chris Bosch, Georgia Tech, Grant Hill, Duke, and D Wade Marquette. All NBA, yo, Chris Paul and Tim Duncan from Wake, uh, Wake Forest putting in work. Hakeem from Houston, Magic, John Stockton from Gonzaga, and there's George Mikan from DePaul. All NBA third, Penny. Yeah, he's got a nice duo with Derrick Rose, Paul Ayers, and Villanova. Uh, the other two of the big three in Houston and James Harden. A bunch of guys I pointed out in the intro. And we've got some action to determine. Uh, we've got the play-in tournament yet to come, but I see UCLA, UNC as one seeds, Kentucky and Duke as two seeds. Well, some smart guy like uh, three minutes ago, I, I think predicted that very outcome. Good job. You should have learned to keep your mouth shut. But with single elimination matchups like anything can happen dude i don't know if they'll be the final four teams remaining okay especially so so they both won 60 duke and unc but so did ohio state yep georgetown figured their rotation out yes my cinderella DePaul blue demons are in the playoffs indiana michigan villanova okay charles barkley and auburn are a play-in team in the basement florida ah minnesota was not a cinderella run chris bosh and georgia tech didn't do well uh neither did james Harden. washington oh chris paul and Tim Duncan just missed out. So did Georgia. I'm not surprised that Washington missed out. I was hoping for the best. They're the closest collegiate program to where I live. Brandon Roy, Detlef Shrimp, Isaiah Thomas, a really fun team too. Actually, a really fun team applies to Georgia. I was hoping they would succeed solely because of Dominique and Anthony Edwards. Just, just dunking on everybody. We needed that in the playoffs. But moving to the West, oh my gosh. UCLA went 73 and nine. Would you look at that? Kentucky won 60 games, but uh, Wilt, Joel, and Kansas are right there. Michigan State, with Magic. They're competitive too. A definite drop off to D Wade and Marquette. KD and Texas looking good. LSU, that Shaq, Louisville, USC, and Houston all playing teams. Missing the offs, Blake Griffin, Trey Young, and Oklahoma. Arizona, I thought they were sneaky heavyweights, man. What happened? Illinois, UNLV, Memphis, Cal, and Oscar in Cincinnati failed to make. Memphis, I didn't mention in the intro. I really had no idea what they were going to do because uh, D Rose, Penny Hardaway, a super cool, authentic duo, but like, was it gonna work? I, I guess not. I also didn't shout out California, a uh, Cal earlier. They've got a top heavy roster, but just so many guards, right? Like uh, Daryl Imhoff, they're only big. I can see why that wasn't balanced enough to succeed because these were all time rosters with so many great players. Uh, numbers were muted a bit. Obviously, Chris Bosch, though, taking home the scoring title and led the league in rebounding. Uh, he played so many minutes for that Georgia Tech team. Tim Duncan put up big numbers too in a losing effort. KD had the best season, him and D Wade of teams that are in the playoffs. So that's, you know, that's something. Uh, where is my guy, uh, Allen Iverson? Okay. Does anybody see Michael Jordan? I know UNC is stacked, but he's not even top 20 in scoring. Looks like Chuck had a good season for Auburn. Wow. Wow. Okay. Bob McAdoo led UNC in scoring, then Vince, then Worthy, then MJ. Uh, <laughs> he came off the bench. I, I guess him and Vince Carter were, man, why would they start Vince over MJ? That don't really make sense, but they won a lot of games. So fair enough. I mean, like who am I? I'd argue with Roy Williams or Dean Smith, whoever's coaching their rebounding leader, Paul Arizon. He's a six foot four small forward grabbing nine boards a game. And finally, assist leaders, Mark Price. So he was there with Chris Bosh and Georgia Tech. Didn't quite work out for them. John Stockton and Gonzaga, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul and Magic, the top five. But with all that out of the way, it is time. We got to get into the play in and then the playoffs. Everything is single elimination here, people. In our first play in game, Shaq, Pete Maravich and LSU. What? Don't tell me they're going to be ousted by Louisville here. Actually,
actually, I'm a casual. I don't think LSU is eliminated if they lose here. I think they get a second chance, but still. They are down three late. Well, who, who are their shooters out here? Oh, definitely not Ben Simmons or Shaq. That's Mahmoud abdul Rauf. He can shoot a three. Oh, he's going to shoot a step back. Good look. He bricked it. Uh, okay. If Donovan Mitchell or Wes Unseld hits a dagger here for Louisville, uh, it, it will be the day. The game will be over. Oh, good cut inside. Junior Bridgman off the fine from West. That's that's probably game. Shaq with 23-14, but in a loss, he's going to need to do more. As indeed, LSU gets a second shot at staying in the playoffs. Uh, Louisville advanced right through. LSU plays the winner of Houston versus USC. And barring a true March Madness-esque miracle here late in the game. Nah, it's not going to happen. Uh, Houston survives. End of the road for USC. Um, Fair enough. I I'm kind of glad Hakeem is advancing. Oh, wh wait a minute. It was Elvin Hayes doing the carrying. 32 and 10. Good job. We'll get back over to the west part of our bracket in a second. But first, we got to go through the two playing games over on this side. The Fab Five Michigan. They are on the brink here. Oh, no. You you don't love to see that. Um, Okay, but that that's a blowout. That is a... Also, they weren't on the brink. This is the 7-8 seed. I am such a casual. Oh, it was Glenn Rice carrying, not the Fab Five. There you go. Oh, my God. Mm, uh, so sometimes, sometimes I accidentally do dumb things when making a video. Uh, I accidentally just skip past a bunch of games. I accidentally pressed this, this enter button right here, which just all of a sudden things started simulating. O okay, but let me at least catch you up on what we missed. I'm not recording all that again. I'm a an idiot. I'm so sorry. Charles Barkley and the Auburn Tigers would upset in their first play in matchup, taking down Carmelo and the Syracuse Orange. They'd win a second straight do or die game as Chuck Person paced Auburn in a 14 point win over Villanova. The Wildcats were eliminated. You know, like like one of the Wildcats team. Th th there's like 17 of them in college. It doesn't make sense. Anyways, the play in finale on the left side of our bracket was a bit of a letdown as neither Shaq nor Hakeem put up large numbers. Bob Pettit was able to lead LSU through to the main stage. Once there, uh, so much pain. I simulated through two upsets. Jimmy Butler and D-Wade were a duo I pointed out in the intro, and they did some damage, combining for 40 points, leading Marquette past Magic Johnson and the MSU Spartans. On the other side of the bracket, Quentin Richardson led the way as my beloved DePaul outlasted Georgetown and their uh, 38 Hall of Fame centers. Amazing. The final two games that regrettably got skipped, while well, they weren't upsets, but they were freaking good games. In a tight four-point finish, Ohio State used a nice 20-point effort from D'Lo to edge past the original Isaiah Thomas in Indiana. While in a two-point game, Joel Embiid carried Kansas with 28 points, just sneaking past KD in Texas, Durant with 25 and a loss. And now I've saved a, a backup save file so I don't accidentally do that. I'm I'm really annoyed, but I didn't want to re-simulate the whole season. A anyways, let's just go from here. I was able to stop the sim fast enough. Uh, we didn't lose a big chunk of our bracket, and we still have our one and two seeds left to play, so that's where some chaos could really happen. Because you just know our big four teams, Duke, UNC, UCLA, and uh, whoever, the UNC, they aren't all going to advance. It, it can't happen. And when one of these teams falls, we will be there no matter what. I'm not sure if it's going to be Duke. All right, Michigan is fighting. They are the seven seed versus two seed. It's an upset waiting to happen. Nope. All good defense, Zion. Oh, man. Down six points. Michigan really didn't. Nah, they, I don't think they can afford an empty possession. This becomes a must-stop situation here. Zion just, just backing down from the three-point line. Kyrie's out there wearing number one, looking good, stepping back, and that is just way too easy, Michigan. What are you doing? You've got to be kidding me right now. Okay, I might as well leave this in the video. Now, after accidentally simming, or the, my game just crashed. I was trying to edit a jersey for Auburn. What is going on? Thankfully, I'd saved this time, so we didn't lose anything other than my mind a little bit. All right, you want to get nuts? Okay, so apparently uh, 2K, uh, they, for whatever reason, they don't want me to have Auburn uh, wearing Auburn jerseys. So whatever, man, something's glitched up. They're going to be wearing Philadelphia 76er jerseys. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the Cinderella team I've been looking for. 2K won't even let them wear the right jerseys. Oh, they're about to upset UNC, the one seed. Wait, no, 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 wait, wait, hold on. Hold, no, no, it's over. Th 30 point. Uh, all right. Chuck, you did your thing. 30, uh, 25, 9, and 3. It, it wasn't enough. Okay. That's, um, yeah, yeah UNC. I, I mean, they're very good. Two of our heavyweights down, two to go. Uh, Kentucky is the two seed. Louisville with uh, Wes Unsell, Donovan Mitchell. They're a pretty good team. Can they do it? Oh my, this game could go either way and it's going to be clutch either way. Kentucky clinging to a three-point lead. Honestly, honestly, I have to share that. Louisville had a 
pretty sizable lead in the fourth quarter of this game, or at least the third. They were up double digits. Uh, they've choked it away, but ah, offensive foul at a time like this. Also, no Donovan Mitchell on the court, closing this out for Louisville, their second best player. He has six fouls. Oh, that is so frustrating. He fouled out. I had to keep foul outs on though. This is this is the, I even gave them six, the NBA game. Man, that is just undisciplined basketball, Donovan Mitchell. It might've cost Louisville an upset. I'm vamping as Kentucky is low-key getting clamped. D-book hand in the face. Four, three. Um, yeah, that's probably the dagger right there. One final shot at one of our heavyweights getting upset in the first round. And you know what? With Shaq on LSU, I, I kind of see the vision. He could outplay Kareem. And then, uh, well, there's MVP winning Russell Westbrook, uh, six man Bill Walt. Uh, okay. It was clearly an uphill battle for LSU. That that was my point listing their roster. Um, honestly, a 13 point loss is kind of like a silver linings W, but uh, it, it's a loss. Yep. Can't, can't fight your way around that. We are down to our final, our Elite Eight. Yes, that's right. March Madness. Um, Yeah, yeah. Are we going to have a predicted Final Four or will somebody else step up? By the way, in the first round, the biggest individual performance did come from Joel on Kansas. 28, 11, and 6. Okay, I, I see you, buddy. Ooh, and Joel's actually the first game up in our Elite Eight. Him and Wilt taking on Kentucky. I don't know if Kentucky's got the bigs to match. All right. Okay, come on come on that's just, okay well yeah i really knew what the final four was going to be before we even started this video come on okay maybe ohio state and all their ogs from the 1950s 1960s uh maybe they can compete with duke them bunch of floppers you've got this buckeyes a few moments later ah uh, well michael Re okay really now michael Re now you're gonna pull up like a boss and hit a three when you're down 25 points you just just hate to see that. Oh my Lanta, Kyrie Irving, 39 points. I mean, they're so deep and balanced and they've got a stud leading the way. That's that's a recipe for success. Okay, with all due respect, the team I have like the least amount of confidence in upsetting this round, uh, it's Marquette uh, taking on UCLA. M maybe this that maybe that's a reverse jinx, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with anything to help. Come on, Jimmy and D Wade, find that magic. Oh my, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, I, I reverse jinxed it into success. So let's go. I'm sorry, UCLA fans. Um, first of all, it's not over for you. I'm sorry I'm rooting against you, but you know, it is what it is. The game is the game. Kareem, what? Get that sky hook out of here. Oh my gosh, this Marquette team has no scores outside of Jimmy and D Wade. Jimmy going to work. Left handed push shot. I don't know why that happened, but it did. Can they bear down and get a stop? I think Jim Jones is like six foot ten trying to guard Kareem. That was a terrible pass. You could have stole that. He got Glenn. Kick the ball out, Glenn. There you go. D Wade inside getting fouled by Reggie. But honestly, good foul. Even if D Wade makes both of these, they need. Yeah. Reggie Miller hit both free throws for UCLA Marquette. Like, if, if you shoot a three here and make it, I will think you have some life. Don't just go for a two. Or at least go for it very quickly. D Wade pulling up. I mean, you're just. That, that is so unserious. Look at Reggie. He's not even going to tell. Wait, oh, wait a minute. Reggie Miller, speaking of unserious, Doc. Doc. Yes, finds D Wade. Dwayne, you shoot a three. Dude, you could have shot a three. Now Glenn River shoots it. Nah, nah. You are unserious, Marquette. Okay, our last chance at an upset in the Elite Eight. That is DePaul wearing Indiana Pacer jerseys. I don't know why their custom jerseys didn't save. I, I'm not going to risk my game crashing again. It is what it is. This would be massive. Oh, yeah. Let's watch this possession. George Mikan in the post. I told you, UNC doesn't have these bigs to compete with George Mike in the OG. Wait a minute. This is a close game in the third quarter. No, no, DePaul. Yeah, yeah. Keep it close. And <laughs> never mind. Dang it, dude. Mark Aguirre did his thing. George Mike in 22. But with George. Why'd you only take 15 shots? That's just not the recipe to success. And if anybody happened to skip from like minute two of this video to this point, uh, say a congrats to pass Jay. Uh, I nailed it. UCLA, Kentucky, UNC, Duke. Well, there are final four. At the very least, let's get some good epic clutch finishes before uh, between these four blue blood heavyweight schools. Come on now. Oh, UNC going to MJ right away. Oh, this is skinny MJ though. He's scared. He's yeah, he's missing a post. Oh my gosh. Are you? Are you kidding me right now? I got to go back and analyze the rosters. I, I got There's no way 
Duke? I, I honestly would have said Duke out of these four heavyweight teams. I would have said Duke is the weakest. They just beat UNC by 30. What? What happened here? Vince led the way 26 points in 20. Michael Jordan 13. But he was not. Why did they have MJ? I, uh, he's not coming off the bench, but like playing such limited minutes. Okay, hold on real quick. Uh, so Duke, I mean, again, they're very good overall. Uh, they've got Kyrie. I thought like this log jam of power forwards, they don't have an imposing center. I mean, Elton Brand is very good, but yeah, he's not like a seven foot two beast. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's also the issue I thought with UNC. I mean, Bob McAdoo is undersized. Brad Doherty probably didn't get very many minutes. Um, overall wise, UNC looks better. I don't know. Maybe Kyrie Torch, Charlie Scott. I, I just, I don't know why Vince and James Worthy were playing more minutes than MJ. All right. If I made an official prediction, official bracket, I would have been wrong. I would have thought UNC beats Duke right here. I mean, I think UC, uh, UCLA should run away with it. They've got Kareem. Kentucky has uh, nobody like that. They've got a bunch of point guards, but obviously I was wrong out the gates. Now let's watch his first possession. Kevin Love up top. All right. Gail Goodrich, uh, pump fake, pump fake. All right. Pick and roll. Goodrich. Oh, stepping back. Oh, that, that's a brick. I don't know. Kentucky, can you do it? Oh my gosh. Hold on. I'm on the verge of being wrong for a second straight game. This is good. This is good. Kentucky's down three. Towns? Oh, okay. Um, just got dunked on by Kareem. All right. Unless they toss AD on Kareem and even then they have nobody that can compete here in the clutch. D books inside. That's a tough finish. Where's the ref? And one maybe ref? Three point deficit. Uh, Kentucky, no doubt. What am I... I'm like, I'm trying to commentate here, bro. I'm trying to talk strategy. You know, you get a stop, you hit a three. It's just such a simple entry pass to Kareem. Shay, shoot it, man. What are you? Oh my gosh. All these teams are so unserious when they get against UCLA. A hook shot. Really, Shay? That's real. I mean, okay, you get bailed out, but even now it's too late. All right, we might be in business. They've got a ton of shooters. These modern day hoopers. D-Book going to work. Spinning, spinning again, kicking out Cliff Hagen. He is not modern day, but he's going to shoot it. He's white and, and he's missing. All right, then. It was a pretty good look. And it brings us to our final, I guess, you know, Duke is a two seed. So that's like an upset kind of, no, not at all. They were one of four heavyweights. It's a one versus two seed, pretty predictable, but what can you do? I just showed the Duke roster a few moments ago. We know how great they are. UCLA, uh, UCLA I'm pretty sure, did I call them the most balanced of the heavyweights earlier? If I didn't, that is what I meant. They got every position covered. They've got size, shooting, speed. They've got everything. So I guess that means in the final of our ultimate all-time March Madness NBA League. Um, I, I guess I think UCLA takes it, but uh, let's find out. Oh, and there you go. There you go, dude. What what a lack of chaos in this video. I can't lie. I need to be, I, I should be selling this as being the greatest video I've ever made to all you who, but, but if you're watching now, you've seen nothing it. Nothing unpredictable, nothing chaotic, a lack of clutch finishes. Dude, this is what happens when you have one team specifically and like a group of a few teams that are just so dominant on paper. UCLA, did they even break a sweat, man? I mean, I've jumped into their last couple of games and both of them were technically clutch finishes, but they, they shut the door. They put the other team away like instantly. Offense, defense, they've got it all. Duke couldn't even crack 100 points. Jason Tatum, oh, he cuts the lead to 10. And there you go. All-time March Madness in the books. UCLA completes a perfect season. They went 73-9. and nine. Reggie Miller getting the NBA title trophy. Um, that That's cool. That's good. They went 73-9 and nine and didn't choke it in the finals, Gold state i'm just saying Drew holiday um okay I, I maybe he won finals mvp it might be glitched uh, shout out to drew one time i guess and although it was a couple one and two seeds in the final four and in, in the final game um it was still a lot of fun although this roster this this setup is so much fun i think i gotta like rapid fire simulate through one more season just to see if we get a different result uh, okay in year two uh well, obviously duke was still great but grand hill wins mvp that's fun he obviously makes first team all nba there's Tim Duncan again, John Stockton, and Damon is supposed well, Gonzaga were they and Brandon Roy from Washington. I see UCLA, UNC, Duke and Kentucky. All right. I don't see Washington or Gonzaga in the playoffs. Well, that's just like, that's that anticlimactic. It was UNC winning 71 games this season. Duke winning 69. So they got even more dominant. UCLA 171, Kentucky 64. Yeah. This year, D-Wade had the best individual season. 21 points a game. Tim Duncan 20 and 10. Solid double-double averages. Magic Johnson's Michigan State Spartans again disappointing. This time losing in the play-in. Well, this time 
DePaul. Oh, they lose in the play and Villanova actually survives. There you go. And Auburn again. Oh, there we go. Into the final four. We've got UCLA, UK. Yeah, yeah. Duke versus Georgetown. The UNC Tar Heels fall. Vince Carter led the way with 22 points. Again, Michael Jordan not playing enough minutes. And I get, yo, Roy Hibbert leading the way for Georgetown. All their Hall of Fame centers and it's Roy Hibbert leading the way. That's amazing. Unfortunately, we end up with a uh, UCLA Duke rematch in the finals. So nothing really changed. Uh, but UCLA, nope, they won last year too. I definitely forgot. So there you go. UCLA, the most dominant college program ever. Did, did any, anybody have thoughts on that down below? Let me know. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and uh, check out another from my channel.